Hi, my name is Catlin, and I took the lead on Chapter 9, the Station Rotation Model. And in that chapter, I highlight the benefits of the Station Rotation Model. I present some creative solutions to kind of meet some of the challenges that teachers who are shifting from a traditional model to the Station Rotation Model might face in their classroom. I provide some strategies for how do you design a Station Rotation Model, what's kind of a good path to, to go down as a teacher thinking about developing these types of lessons. There are some example lessons because I know as a teacher it's really helpful to kind of see a model in practice or see a lesson outline so that I can get ideas for what this might look like in my class and then kind of think about and um, provide strategies for some of the logistical concerns that teachers should consider when shifting to the station rotation model or incorporating the station rotation model into their classroom. Because whether it's even small things like the time lost between rotating through the different stations or it's concerns about the um, technology and keeping kids focused in the online station, all of those are very real for teachers who are making this shift. And so the chapter covers all of those concerns Concerns and also gets teachers thinking about what kind of support do you need to use station rotation in your classroom. I definitely emphasize the fact that station rotation is really great for schools that don't have a one-to-one -one program or don't have enough technology to put a device in the hand of every kid. The station rotation, just as the name suggests, has students moving through multiple learning stations and at least one of those stations needs to be an online station for it to be considered a blended learning model. So what's important is to, to tell teachers you only need a, a couple devices devices to really make this uh, blended learning model work. So if you have a collection of computers or iPads, you can, you can make this happen and just have a single online station. I even warn teachers when I'm training, you know, even if you are in a one-to-one -one and you have technology for every kid, it's important to keep those stations varied. You don't want a kid staring at a computer screen the entire period. Why not have stations where there's like a makerspace station or there's kids collaborating to solve a problem or, you know, you have that teacher-led station where all of a sudden... Teachers have like the time and space to, to work one-on-one -on -one with kids. They can pull them out of station rotation for that individualized time, or teachers can lead a station so that they're able to kind of tailor that instruction for a smaller group of kids. So there's lots of benefits. This chapter definitely explores some of them. And then there's at the end kind of some questions for you, your staff, um, to think about as you're reading the book, which are kind of what are the benefits of challenge and the challenges of a station rotation model? Are there any obstacles? you'd anticipate or as a teacher is there any support that you need from leadership to really make this model work in your classroom um, what's your access to technology how's that going to impact your lesson design um, so lots of things that you guys can think about and and talk about and we'd love for anybody reading the book thinking about these big issues to participate in kind of an ongoing twitter chat using the hashtag bl in action so please participate if you're on twitter we'd love to hear your thoughts your questions, your concerns, um, any highlights from the book.